नमस्कार आई एम अशोक वेद एंड आई एम सो सो डिलाइटेड टू बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग यू टू समवन हु इज लिविंग अवर पैशन विद कंपैशन एंड व्हेन वी लुक एट द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इट इज वेरी रेयर दैट वी कैन सी द डेप्थ विद व्हिच दे आर कंसर्न अबाउट इश्यूज व्हिच वी एज अ लार्जर community are facing whether it is india or any other nation the problem of poverty concerns humanity and uh, sakshi who you would be meeting shortly has been in the so- social sector for last 6 years she not only have fundraising experience she is skill in optimizing operations uh, what she has done or has also helped in uh, not just bringing her experience and background in economics finance and business strategic research um what she's doing now we'll focus more on that and now she's uh, uh, helping uh, uh, start up the nudge foundation as manager uh, and uh, what this uh, non profit uh, is working uh, towards uh, alleviating poverty sustainably and scalably we will learn from her so let me take this opportunity of welcoming sakshi welcome sakshi namaste namaste thank you so much for having me here very excited to be here and to talk about uh, the nudge so let us uh, before we talk about the nudge let us talk about sakshi first and when you study in london you study economics and there is corporate world waiting for you what was it which uh, uh, brought you Uh, towards the non-profit sector. So it was very simple, actually. I started volunteering with Pratham, which is India's largest education non-profit. Uh, while I was still uh, doing my masters at King's College London, I was studying international political economy at the time. And while I was um, while I started volunteering, I realized that I found the work really purposeful, and I found the people that I was working with extremely passionate. So I decided that you know this this was the place that I wanted to be. um and i've been in the development sector ever since first with pratham um and now with the nudge so pratham has also done very well and uh, talk to me about your experience of uh, working with others uh, who are like minded in terms of uh, uh, their dedication to the cause and pratham also is doing very very good but uh, what differentiates uh, you as a professional while you are part of a corporate um, uh, culture and uh, these kind of uh, non profit organizations sure so there is this misconception i would say growing misconception that um, that people who work in non profits walk around with a jhola have a big bindi on their head but uh, that's not the case anymore um uh, even in both the organizations that i've worked with pratham and the nudge um i've been working with young people people of my age who come from similar backgrounds who have uh, you know extremely good education and work experience but they come to this place because they care about the problems that uh, that these organizations are solving um so in that sense it's been it's been almost i almost feel blessed uh, you know to be working with the kind of people that i'm working with every day who show that passion who care about uh, you know how their work affects the larger communities around them um that sort you know that that keeps me going So now there is another uh, side when uh, we look at your background from London back to Bangalore uh, there is uh, some image about uh, some of the international uh, foundations and uh, there have been some new laws uh, in that context you must be aware about it so do you think it requires some additional um, cautious uh, handling of uh, functioning when you are raising funds which uh, involves some international bodies yes absolutely so we are uh, we are already extremely cautious about the funds that we raise um, from outside of india um and we are again uh, we've been super lucky to have been supported by organizations like the bill and melinda gates foundation school foundation rockefeller foundation um who who understand the work that we do in the country um and are willing to support that work um so the way the way that we're structured um is is while we work in india we do also have um a non profit registered in the us um and we do a lot of our fundraising through that um to that entity as well 
um, which is you know one of the safest ways of being able to collect that money for that money to be accounted for and it be extremely transparent um, you know with with all the legal um, legal and financial compliances in place we well, know let's go to the nudge uh, and learn from you about the situation when we talk about poverty how it is defined and uh, the number is staggering it's probably one third of india's population which is below poverty line and uh, as a common man would think it is beyond my capacity even to think because most of the time most of us are, us are just uh, trying to figure out a way to sustain ourselves so to think beyond that uh, and have an organization like the nudge addressing this issue which uh, many five star plans of government of india have tried to address and so talk to me about uh, the confidence even if there is one inch movement towards positive direction by the nudge where that conviction comes from sure so um, the conviction comes from exactly the the point that you said right that the government is spending crores lakhs of crores of of um, money on poverty alleviation programs themselves they're trying to uh, you know support citizens themselves unfortunately these programs while they work for the masses they will not work for the poorest of the poor and the poorest of the poor are the kind of people that we want to work with and that we want to um, enable through livelihoods through the work that we are doing um and those are exactly the 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 startup society that we are are working um with and we do this across three different verticals so um under the center for social development and entrepreneurship and the center for rural development we work on urban and rural livelihoods uh we put youth on a path to sustainable employment so um employment where you know uh, we're not just looking at them being employed but how do they stay in those jobs and how do they grow in their careers how do they define a career um in our in our rural livelihoods work for example we're working on evidence based programs so these are programs that have been tried and tested before we're running these programs ourselves we're demonstrating the impact and then we're looking at how this can be picked up by the government in the future or picked up by other non-profits in the sector um to scale the, uh, to scale these programs and to reach more people um, across the country so uh, the last sure go ahead go ahead So the last thing that we're doing um, under the Center for Social Innovation is we're nudging and nurturing talent into the sector as well. Um, so, like I like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that has kept me in the sector is the fact that the people I work with are, who are so passionate. Um, how do we how do we bring more such people into the sector? How do we grow their potential um, and how do we most utilize their potential? So through social entrepreneurship, which is something that we promote, um, and through prize challenges. we are uh, pushing more people to join the sector and to solve these problems um, at scale so while i was reading uh, about the nudge i also found it interesting that uh, the approach involves designing effective solutions and uh, that involves sourcing innovation innovating potential solutions action solutions etc so give me any example which uh, you feel is a little different approach than what already was uh, taken by the government or by other not not for profit organizations and how it helped sure so i will talk about something um, that i very recently did so i was very recently in jharkhand visiting uh, the program that we run there called the ultra poor program which is based on the graduation approach now this program targets the poorest of the poor uh people who even government uh, programs are not able to reach so while the government has put in place um you know things like uh, the aadhar card uh, pds which is the ration card some of you may uh, some of you might have heard of these schemes um and narega which is the right to employment while the government has put all these schemes in place uh we work with families who might not even be aware that these exist and if they are aware that these exist then they might not be able to access these schemes so we work with these families we give them a little push um in the form of a grant and they use this grant to uh, to buy an asset we also work with them over 3 years um to to build this asset into a livelihood that can sustain them for a long period of time um so this is something that we're doing in jharkhand which is a uh, very unique uh, we're one of the few programs that are actually uh, you know being able to deliver this um, at scale as well we're working with 1200 families right now So, talk to me about your own experience of being there recently, interacting with people who are beneficiaries 
of this program, their response, and how it energized you towards your commitment a little bit more probably. Um, so it energized my commitment to the problem even more uh, than than I ever had before. In fact, I wanted to um, spend even more time on the ground. I was there for about three days um, only. Um, we visited around uh, seven to eight villages um, that are so backward that they still, unfortunately, do not have access to electricity, um, don't have access to running water. These uh, the families that we visited, you know, live on the periphery of the of the villages. They don't have access regular access to uh, to the markets. Uh, they come from uh, backward classes, um, you know, on the social strata. So these are the kind of families uh, that we're working with. Um, and we've been working with them for about a year and a half. So at this point in the program, um, you know, the women in these families who, who we uh, interact with, we call them Didis. The Didis have been running their own businesses for about a year and a half. And the kind of confidence that the Didis um, exhibit in terms of, you know, being financially independent, being able to send their kids back to school, uh, being able to provide food for the family, um, just that just that sort of self-confidence um, and the fact that they're able to stand up on their feet, that itself has has been a transformative experience for me to watch. Um, and I've, I feel that in myself um, as well, this, you know, this, this transformation of how something, um, and I work in the fundraising team, so um, it's not that I spend a lot of time on the ground, but for me to be able to uh, visit the families and families and to see what my work has led to, um, that that in itself has been extremely inspirational. What are the challenges uh, for fundraising, especially after the impact of COVID-19 and uh, people are uh, trying to stay away from each other for a long time, which means you don't have the ability to organize big events where people get together and sort of energize each other as well as uh, verify, sort of get a palpable feel of how their funds are being used. So on that front, what has been uh, the creative way uh, to overcome this challenge? Um, so I would say two, there have been two major challenges. One is uh, the challenge in funding itself, where a lot of the funding has now um, from livelihoods, which is, which is you know one of the major side effects of the pandemic, um, health, of course, being the major one, um, because a lot of uh, people's livelihoods have been affected, but a lot of the funding is still going towards healthcare. Um, that's that's something that has pushed back development in India by at least 10 to 15 years, if not more. Just in the last two years, I think we've lost around 20 years of development. Um, so that's that's one part of fundraising, um, which is extremely challenging to be able to raise funds again for livelihoods, for people to rebuild the lives that they have lost because of the lockdown. Um, so that's that's one sort of angle there. Um, in terms of actually raising funds and bringing people together and energizing them, um, again, that has been a huge challenge. A lot of our fundraising has moved um, online. So we we meet people online. We convene with people online. Uh, Charcha 2020 and 2021 were uh, global events that we that we managed to pull off online, which we would ideally uh, you know have wanted to uh, do in person. But we we basically had to move all of our programs um, and everything online um, in places so like Jharkhand. Uh, sorry, let me interrupt you and please continue. And uh, I'm reminded of uh, your conversation in this Charcha 2021 with an actor uh, who is known more as an actor. And I just came to know about his uh, focus uh, in the not uh, profit sector for the last nine years with his company. Talk to me about your experience and. So there is one side of an actor where you look at Kunal Kapoor as a glamorous personality, but here is a soulful conversation that you had for this Charcha 2021. Um, how was uh, that uh, experience for you, preparing for it, knowing that uh, there is certain uh, craze uh, with the person that you are talking to, but you are relating to him on a different level. So That's right. So, I mean, I've always admired his work um, be beyond Bollywood as well. Um, so he runs uh, Keto, which is uh, Keto.org, which is a crowdfunding website based in India. Um, and he's been doing that, I think, for the last nine years. So I, I had anyway been following his journey uh, since then. And I was a, a fan since then. So for me, it was, you know, it was great to be able to actually uh, speak to him about this and ask him questions um, about that. Um, and it was just a great platform to, you know, spread information, to spread awareness um, about the state of philanthropy or the state of individual giving, who we call everyday givers, um, you know, how, how they have sort of 
you know, come together, especially during COVID, to uh, unite and to support causes and to support uh, people who are who are suffering. So, so great I experience. Think, yeah, absolutely, I think India has changed um, a lot uh, in terms of uh, not just the digital economy uh, and uh, digital banking, but the way things are operating to raise funds and what uh, Kunal Kapoor is doing, uh, which you brought to the attention of more people. Um, and moving forward towards the other area, which you already uh, mentioned, which relates to skill development. And I think present government have also uh, given a lot of emphasis uh, on skill development and uh, the data as uh, the website of the Nudge says, 180 million youth will enter India's workforce in uh, the next 15 years. And so there is a massive skill deficit of 400 million people by 2022. Now, in order to address uh, this situation, the theory of change uh, given or adopted by the nudge involves right information, right training, right jobs. Uh, talk to me about how exciting you feel when uh, the nudge has successfully empowered some youth with the uh, development of skills and has there been some tangible result that uh, you personally are aware of? Yes, absolutely. So in the last six years, we have worked with, um, I think, around 10,000 youth or so, at least. Um, and we're working with, with around 1,000 youth every month. Uh, we're graduating around 1,000 youth every month from our online uh, skilling program called Future Perfect. Uh, there have been tangible results that we've seen uh, through the last six years. So when the nudge uh, originally started in 2015, we started with skill development as the main focus area because we felt that that was where uh, that was where we could make the most uh, at that point in time. That was where we could make the most uh, impact. Um, so in the in the last six years, we've seen that the youth that we have worked with um, tend to have higher salaries than youth who are not in the program. Uh, they tend to uh, be saving more. They tend to be contributing more to their family income. They tend to be staying in the jobs for a longer period of time. They tend to be getting a um, larger number of awards or recognition at their workplace. Um, and general you know, satisfaction of life, uh, being confident in being able to speak English at the workplace or, or speaking in an interview, um, all of those, on all of those parameters, uh, we've seen that our uh, graduates, youth who have graduated from our programs, uh, tend to do better uh, than youth who have not uh, gone through the program. So this very is exciting. This is an exciting uh, era where you can contribute uh, at the grassroots level without, if I uh, use this um, not so politically correct uh, term, without actually getting into the mud, you can uh, help. So what makes a lot of difference is the kind of people which we surround with. And the team uh, that you have found at the nudge, uh, when I was looking at the website, looks like everyone who's and who have some or the other relationship. Maybe sometimes they have been there as speakers, etc. So rubbing shoulders with who's who of our time in terms of people with compassion and resourcefulness, uh, what that taught you and uh, who you consider inspired you most or any anecdote where you felt that there was uh, additional uh, or sort of uh, fresh commitment internally on your part uh, for having witnessed this or having heard that, something like that. Sure. So I will not go into naming any individuals, but uh, we've been overwhelmed by the support that we've received at the Nudge, uh, just in terms of the time and expertise that people have brought uh, to the nut. So we have an extensive uh, board and advisory uh, advisory board and legal board. Um, and they've been extremely, extremely generous with their time, uh, with their expertise in supporting us, in helping us, you know, through our vision, um, supporting us when, whenever we've had challenges in sort of, you know, bringing their networks together, uh, supporting our fundraising, um, whatever whatever the team needs, they've been there, uh, even, even in terms of bringing talent uh, to the nudge, uh, in bringing the leadership that we have today. Um, so in, in that sense, we've been extremely lucky. Um, we've also seen a lot of support from our donors who continue to support us year on year, um, and, and they continue to support uh, different programs. So we've had, we've had donors who've been supporting us for the last uh, six years, in fact, 
um, and they are they're excited to learn with us uh, that's how they put it so they're excited to learn with us and to see what impact can be created um, how how they can support you know be a part of that journey and how they can uh, support in scaling it so just those two um, you know to witness that people believe in us um, they believe that change is possible um, and that we can bring that change about so bringing about change is very very important and uh, that confidence or conviction and uh, a perpetual source of uh, enthusiasm is very very important another uh, part of the center of the nudge is empowering the real problem uh, solvers and uh, let let me hear a little bit more about this third center which is uh, the center for social innovation and we slightly touched upon it uh, but uh, this also mentioned about empowering those who are real problem solvers uh, this requires extensive research of who is doing what and where one has impacted so this this must be quite a wide range of uh, activities uh, and uh, focused attention on multiple levels so talk to me a little bit more about the role of this center please sure so the center for social innovation exists to nudge and nurture talent in the sector uh, we nudge talent by um, empowering them through what we call the incubator and the accelerator programs so we uh, we provide a small grant a seed grant which is similar to one that would be provided by any other um, say tech startup incubator uh, and that's exactly how we function so we incubate uh, very young nonprofits these are nonprofits between the ages of 0 to 3 uh, for the incubator and uh, up to the age of 6 for the accelerator um they come to us with um, with an idea or with a product that they want to uh, be able to you know scale up um and we support them with a grant as well as access to networks access to funders um mentorship by some of the people that you might have seen on the website so mentorship by people in the development sector in the startup world um to sort of build out their teams um you know and uh, make sure that they they're doing well on their hr finance legal compliance um, and all of those issues basically building um, a strong uh, support system for them to to build their organizations um and we don't we uh, we we incubate and accelerate organizations from um, across thematic areas as we call them so across education health um livelihoods um we we incubate organizations regardless of of you know what they're doing as long as it's in poverty alleviation um because we we put our bet on the entrepreneur uh, not so much on you know the the problem itself but on the entrepreneur and you know building their capabilities uh we've also started um working with the Karnataka government on something called the Indian Administrative Fellowship which is for um individuals who are you know who have 15 to 20 years of experience already so we work with those individuals and we um you know plug them into into the government machinery working with secretaries in the state these in the state uh, to solve critical problems that that are identified by the secretaries in the state um so again solving critical gaps um you know solving for critical gaps bringing people uh, from outside the sector um into the sector nurturing them over 18 months with the idea that you know after 18 months they will they will be um entrenched in the system and that they will want to continue working on solving these problems rather than going back to the corporate sector or rather than going back to you know say consulting or um or or technology or or something else um so these these are some of the programs uh, that we're running at the uh, center for social innovation very very nice sakshi it's such a pleasure and enlightening experience talking to you about the nudge and our viewers would be happy to learn more about it uh, through the website of the nudge and it is very well designed i must say very smartly uh, conveyed uh, various ideas so um, wishing uh, you a lot of uh, good uh, luck as well as success for the nudge um, as we conclude anything uh, you would like to say to those young uh, aspiring uh, i should say uh, youth whether they are in india america or london who also feel a sense of commitment for the society so um, tell them about the parallel uh, space where they can be what they want to be and be more probably useful 
Absolutely. So, um, I mean, we've we've all spent, and I you know say this as as somebody who has worked in the sector for the last six years, we've all spent so much time and energy and efforts um, and money uh, for for a lot of us as well, right? Um, on our education, on on building a profile, on uh, on just thinking through and and you know becoming smart people uh, and and smart citizens and responsible citizens. Um, so while we've done that, I think uh, it's very it's it's something that not a lot of people know that there is a possibility of building a career in the development sector. Uh, the development sector is becoming more and more professional uh, with every single day. Um, so the the you know um, the image that people have of the development sector being a phase for somebody um, or you know a stepping stone um, that is not the case today. There are so many there are mentors uh, that we can reach out to um, you know who've been in who've been in the space for a long time. So in terms of learning, personal growth, um, all of for all of these things, um, the sector is thriving for young people. Um, so would encourage anybody who's you know young, old, anybody who's watching this to you know learn uh, to learn more about the sector, to engage with people. Just ask you know just ask us on LinkedIn. We're very very open to conversations. Um, and on that note, thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's been a great, you know, just it's been a great uh, while just speaking to you about about the nudge and about myself. Thank you very much, Sakshi. One, I am really proud of you, and I'm really Thank excited you. about the work that the nudge is doing. Um, Thank you. And I'm also excited overall about us because there are many well-meaning people who have their heart at the right place, and they are uh, applying uh, their collective energy to alleviate uh, several problems, including poverty. And on that note, um, wishing a bright future for Sagi. Thank you, thank you so thank, much. Thank you. Thanking all of you for being with us. This is Ashok Vyas. Namaste.